Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Puzzling Stone Sword, which you can get in the first DLC, the Crown of the Sunken King. Now, this weapon is interesting, to say the least. Its moveset is actually pretty useful, and I really like this thing a lot. I never really used it terribly much previously, but I think I'm definitely going to start using it more often. So getting started, the Puzzling Stone Sword, it requires 7 strength and 6 dexterity in order to wield. It has an E scaling in strength and an S scaling in dexterity. The physical base damage of the weapon is 145, and for me, the attack ring with this weapon is 398 withering of blades and flynn's ring. The counter strength of the weapon is 120, poise damage is 25 per hit, and the weight is 2 units. Now this weapon, I would have to say that the biggest pro would be the moveset. This moveset, even though the weapon is extremely common, still somehow catches people off guard. I think the reason behind that is because it's actually deceivingly long. Now when you're just looking at it, you don't always necessarily expect it to expand and go into that whip-like attack like it does. So because of that, people tend to think they're in a safe distance, they'll let their guard down, and then you can easily hit them. It's a great little thing. The only way I think that could be better is if it actually did a bit more poise damage and was actually capable of stunning people more often, but that is what it is. Other pros of the weapon, I would definitely say, of course, the reach I did just mention, the moveset have been mentioned, but it also has a slightly higher than average counter strength for a longsword. There are only two straight sword class weapons that have such a high counter strength. And when I say it's high, I mean it's only 10 higher than their average. Their average is 110. This is 120. It's not that terribly different, but it still does matter and still does make a difference. Especially considering the two-handed R1s are stabbing thrusting attacks, it can lead to some pretty good things. So that pretty much sums up the pros of the weapon. Now the biggest con of this weapon I would definitely say would be its attack rating. Now the reason I'm saying that is because of, well, just think of it like this, guys. I'm using the Ring of Blades and Flynn's Ring. I'm getting an extra 100 attack rating with this weapon. I have 50 dexterity on this build, so without those rings, my attack rating would only be 298. It's not even breaking 300, and yet all other straight swords pretty much break 300 for this build. Yes, it's got an S scaling, but it really doesn't do enough for the weapon. It's probably because it's got low base damage as well, but it just it doesn't do enough to uh, boost that attack rating. So that's why I'd say that's the biggest con. But other than that, you know, I really can't think of any real cons. It's a straight sword. It's got a good move set. It's got the added benefit of extra reach on its R2 attacks that can catch people off guard. And I honestly think that's a really good thing, and there's really no real way to go wrong with this weapon other than the attack rating. So it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I will see you all next time.